Hey everyone and welcome back. In the last video we took a look at the down and dirty basics of the type tool. How to choose a font, how to change the style, the size, anti-aliasing, justification, and color. Now in this video I'm going to show you how to go even further with your text by taking advantage of the character panel. Let's go ahead and take a look. Now chances are you won't see your character panel on your workspace. But like most panels in Photoshop you can activate them under the window menu at the top. Activating the character panel will usually also include the paragraph panel in the tab beside it. The character panel is where you're going to find the other hidden options for you hardcore typists. Let's go through some of them. Now the first row contains the standard font and style picker which you had access to on your options bar. So if you have another tool selected other than the type tool, you can still change the font as long as the type layer is selected. Now right below the font picker is the size control. You also have access to this on your options bar. This list contains the standard font sizes up to 72 points, but if you wanted a larger font, you can either type in the size into the field or click and drag your mouse over top of the icon to the left. Now we're getting into a few options that can't be found on your options bar, such as leading, kerning, and tracking. Leading is the value that defines your line spacing. When you have it set to auto like it is right now, your line spacing will be set based on the size of your font. This will usually give you perfectly spaced lines. However, if you wanted to increase or decrease the spacing, you can either select a value from the list, enter one manually, or just like we adjusted the size a moment ago, you can click and drag the leading icon. Notice how the spacing in between each line is becoming larger as I increase the leading value. The next option is kerning. This allows you to change the spacing between individual letters. You may notice if you try to adjust the kerning that the values are grayed out. To be able to access these, you must first have the type tool selected, and then you must click in between the letters that you want to change. Once that's done, you can now go ahead and change your kerning. A positive value will widen the space, while a negative value will bring the following letter closer to the previous one. Now beside kerning is tracking. This works very similar to kerning, but for your whole block of text, or for a selected group of letters. Notice when I change the tracking value, all the letters in this type layer are being affected. I can also select a group of letters and change the spacing on those separately. Now right below we have the vertical and horizontal spacing. There are certainly going to be times where you found the perfect font, but wish it were a little bit taller or a little bit wider. These two options will allow you to change the scaling while keeping the text editable. Again, you can either type in a value manually or click and drag the icon to the left. As these options are percentage based, a higher percentage will increase the size of the text while a lower percentage will make it smaller. Next, we have baseline shift. At first glance, increasing or decreasing this value seems to just move your text up or down, but this option really comes in handy when dealing with individual letters. There may be times when you're designing a logo and you want one of the letters to shift slightly higher or lower. Selecting the individual letter and then adjusting the baseline shift value will allow you to move that one letter up or down. Now right below this we have a line of icons which affects your text in a few ways. The first two are faux bold and faux italic. There will be times when you run into a font with no styling options. No bold, no italic, nothing. With these faux options, you can fake bold or italic styling for your text. Or if your font does have these styling options, you can use these to overemphasize those styles. Next are cap controls. If you want a very quick way to convert your text into capital letters, you can choose the all caps option, which converts your text into the same size capital letters, or the small caps option, which still converts your text into capital letters, but keeps the current capital letters larger than the lowercase letters. Beside these, we have our super and subscript options. Just like the baseline shift option, this feature works best when individual letters are selected. As an example, if you were typing out an equation and you need to add a squared or cubed symbol, you can easily type a number two, select it, and then choose the superscript option. The same goes for subscript. And finally, we have the underline and strike through options. You should probably be familiar with these from your word processing applications. They're pretty self-explanatory. Finally, down below we have some options that are only available for open type fonts that control ligature, swatches, and fractions. As very few fonts will have these options available, we're going to skip right over them and head into our paragraph panel. Many of the options that are available to you in the paragraph panel you should be familiar with from word processing. The first row of icons control justification. The first three are your standard left, 
center, and right justifications. The next three are specific to the last line in each paragraph. You can choose to have the last line justify to the left, the center, or the right. Finally, the last option is justify all. You see this a lot in books and newspapers. This will force your text to line up flush with the edges of the paragraph block, and it'll space out the characters of each line accordingly. And if you have hyphenate enabled at the bottom, longer words may wrap around to the next line. Lastly, we have our indentation options. The first two are left and right indents. You can apply an indent to the whole paragraph block or individual paragraphs by creating a selection and then increasing the indent value. Now the option right below it is specific to the first line in each paragraph. Increasing this value will push the first line inwards, like you may have seen in articles or books. Finally, the last two options increase the spacing before or after your paragraphs. Pretty self-explanatory. And that's a look at the character and paragraph panels in Photoshop. In the next video, we're going to take a look at some of the new features that were introduced in Photoshop CS6. We'll see you soon.